What's up everybody? Welcome back to Wired to Fish. Today we are out here offshore on the TVA. And you know, one thing about the TVA is there's always figuring out that one bait or that one technique that you can possibly get a bite on. Um, and, and one technique specifically I've had tied on for a lot of these tournaments as of recent has been an older technique that I feel like so many people used to throw and it's sort of been forgotten. Now, for some of you Texas guys, I feel like this is a staple, but an old school Carolina rig, the old school ball and chain, still gets it done all over the country, whether you fish for smallmouth, spotted bass, or largemouth. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of the things and some of the terminal tackle that I use to set this rig up and some of the baits that I use as well. You know, why the Carolina rig I feel like never really has gone out of style is, is, is really the fact that it's such a unique rig, okay? You can put a, a heavy weight, like this one right here, a three quarter, out there and fish offshore and keep bottom contact, but then you have almost this weightless worm or weightless creature bait back there floating around. And especially when you're out there with around current, it's a very natural presentation. So when fish are real fickle, it just seems like, hey, you can keep that bottom contact, but then you have this almost weightless type free range of motion allowing this bait to, to act very natural. And it just seems to get bit all over the country. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the Carolina rig itself. Now the weight is, is all dependent on your personal preference, but you know, right here I have an egg sinker. Uh, I think it's a three quarter. I've actually been using a lot, I don't have them here, is a, is a one ounce and a three quarter ounce tungsten cylinder weight from BMC. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, you really, that tungsten, you feel the bottom a little bit better because it's a little bit more dense. So that's something as well. I always put a, uh, I put a little peg up top so that way that chain or that, that, that weight's sort of pegged there and at least it's not, you know, flailing all around for me personal preference. Um, and then I just put a little, a little bead there. I, I don't personally get all caught up with the, per, the bead color or all that, but basically the big thing with the bead for me, yes, it adds a little bit more, you know, uh, sound to, to, the, to the rig, but it doesn't, more so than anything, it protects your knot. So when I tie that to that swivel, my knot's protected down there. So. Um, and then, then leader length. Leader length is, is, you know, people talk about leader length size. I would say for me, a two and a half, three foot size is about perfect. I can still cast it. If you get too long, you know, you, you're gonna have to go to a 7-Eleven casting rod and it gets a little bit wonky there. And then last but not least is your hook. Now the hook is probably one of the most important parts of this technique, okay? For me, I really prefer a light wire hook. This is a three-aught BMC wide gap hook. Um, and, and as well, one mention I will want to make as well is, is I do try to go to a monofilament line uh, for my leader line, okay? This is allowing my bait to sort of float up and, and stay up in the water column. And, and you got to think, you got this big weight up here, and depending on the bait that you have on there, uh, that mono keeps that bait up there. If you're if you got a lot of current like right here on TBA, it keeps that bait up and and allows that bait to really be natural and flow through that current really well. So, I, I, just a personal preference thing, but I definitely would recommend monofilament and then that lighter wire hook with you know, a three odd, a two or three odd hook. Even if you're throwing a little bit bigger profile bait, I still go with a, a smaller hook because I want that bait again to float up. Now let's dive into some of the particular baits that I put on this rig. Okay, so I got, I got three different particular uh, profiles that I throw. I mean, there's a lot of different things you could throw. You could throw a lizard, this and that, but really three main profiles that I throw when I'm fishing offshore. Uh, you know, first is, is, is a creature style bait. You know, this one right here is, is a Guggenbaits Trench Hog. Um, you can mess around with colors, obviously, depending on the water color. Your black and blues, the water's pretty dirty. This one's more of a green pumpkin. Um, and and that's, that's something that I, I will throw. Normally the first cast, is, or, or normally I'm trying to figure out if they're biting a Carolina rig or not, the creature style bait seems to work really, really well. Um, as the summer goes on, it gets really hot. I, I like to bring out the old 10 inch worm. You know, 10 inch worms are really good. This is a little Guggenbaits Mondo worm. It's just a good profile, it's, it's slender, it's got that ribbon tail, it works well, it kicks with not a lot of weight on it, um, and, and sometimes you can get a lot of bites and some big bites on that little bit bigger profile. And last but not least is just sort of a traditional style straight tail worm. This is a, um, just more like a six inch green pumpkin style, uh, a slim shake worm or like a trick worm style bait. That works really well when you want more of a finesse application when the fish are really goofy, can't get them to bite. Um, this is what I'm gonna pick up. So 
those are my three profiles. You can throw, you know, lizard style baits. You can do a lot of different things. You can throw French fries. I know a lot of people throw multiple different kinds of baits on a Carolina rig, but those are the really my, my three categories that I'm going to pick from when I'm deciding what I'm going to throw on a Carolina rig. So for me on my main line, I'm throwing 17 to 20 pounds Suffolk's Advanced fluorocarbon. As far as is the leader though, I'm throwing the Suffolk's Advanced monofilament, keeping a little bit, that bait up a little bit more on the off the bottom, uh, natural presentation. And I think the monofilament just allows it to float up a little bit more. So you have this, you know, and, and I will throw a little bit lighter leader, you know, 14 pounds Suffolk's Advanced monofilament is what I prefer. So that just allows me to have that bait up off the bottom and really give that natural presentation. So you're gonna notice like I'm throwing a pretty small, it's a three aught wide gap VMC. It's the regular, it's not the heavy cover, uh, but I'm throwing, it's a pretty small hook for this particular rig, but that's keeping that bait up off the bottom. That's gonna allow for me personally, I'm Texas rigging it. So I'm gonna go through there about a quarter, eighth, you know, quarter inch down. I'm gonna go all the way through the bait, you know, and, and I'm gonna text pose this. So that way when that fish bites it, you're good to go. So now it's gotta catch a bass. There he is. There we go. Oh, ball and chain. Okay. Let's get him up in here. That's right there is why I use that little bit lighter wire. It just hooks them really well. You know, when you have that small hook out there and you have a long cast, Fishing offshore, small diameter really does tend to play a little bit better. More long sweeping hook sets, it's not a great big one. That's a good start though. Let's see if we can catch another one. One way, you know, you can really use this technique is, is to cover a lot of water. Uh, you know, right now I'm actually fishing a specific spot, a little hard bottom spot where these fish are grouped up at, but I'm just dragging that bait and I'm casting up current, you know. I'm casting up current, I'm dragging down through there, feeling all that rough stuff. You gotta imagine that, oh, there's, uh, there's one. There he is. I was driving up that bait. Oh, there we go. Like, I, I'm literally dragging. There you go. Dragging up. There we go, like there. See, now you see how that, I set the hook, is like, it was, that was not as great of a sweep set as I would like, but that right there is why I use, it wasn't the top of the mouth, but he's hooked good. That fish is not coming off. A light wire really pins him good. There we go. But I was imagining that bait going up the hill, you know? Let me put this fish back real quick and get another bait real quick. I obviously like that trench arm just a tad. <laughs> doop, doop, <laughs> doop, <laughs> let's go. So, so the one thing that's sort of wonky about making this cast, I'm throwing a seven, six heavy, um, you can throw a 7, 6 to a 7, 11. I would definitely recommend a little bit longer rod uh, because you have this leader and the longer the leader you have, a little bit longer, uh, a little bit tougher it is to cast. So the thing is, it's more of a, a, a lob. You're not, so you're winding up, you, you engage your reel and you're going to make that rotation around and fire it out there. So you're getting a lot of that weight moving and, and then release it out there. So I'll show you. A little around the world cast. You got to get that thing out there and it's just, just like that. So we're set up down current of these fish, you know, this fishing the TVA, I like to fish, you know, where I'm, where I'm down current, I'm presenting that bait with natural current as it flows downstream. And you imagine that if I'm just keep my bait there, that weight's holding it in place. And a lot of times it'll even sweep back around and it'll be kicking. You know, and so you gotta think that. Like, so like, as I'm sitting here, I might get a bite and finally catch up to that fish. You know, and, and, and that's the big thing, is you try to pay attention, make sure you're tight on that fish. When it bites it, take your time, make sure you're tight on that fish. I, I've messed up plenty over the years where I try to set the hook too quickly. It, it's hard, when they pull back, that's when you pull back at them, you know? It's, it's when you feel that bite and you, you feel them got it, okay, he's got it. This is the thing, the Carolina rig system, it, it's a little bit more forgiving than, than our traditional, like a jig where they got a lot of weight there. Um, this is a weightless, you know, sort of weightless technique and allows it to where you really can drag that, that thing. When you feel it, they don't, they don't feel the weight nearly as much as they would where something that's locked down like a, like a football jig. So the good thing is you don't have to worry about them spitting it nearly as quickly. 
So you got a little time, get set up, make sure you get tight on the fish. There he is. Reel down to him, set the hook. So, you know, when I first pulled up on this spot right here, I, I made a few casts with a big spinnerbait, more power fishing stuff, but this is the thing. This is sort of, even though I'm casting this on, you know, 17 pound line, a 7.6 heavy, this is sort of a finesse, you know, finesse presentation. It seems to get those fish that were, that might not be that active, not want to bite a crankbait, might not want to bite, uh, you know, a big profile spinnerbait. Those fish will still bite this technique. You know, I can feel that hard bottom really good. I'm, I'm sort of pulling it over that stuff. And, and as I get in that real rough stuff, I'll every once in a while I let it sit there. I got to imagine like, okay, with that current, it's sort of sweeping around, that trend chuck sweeping around and it's kicking. And a lot of times that's when you'll get your bite as you slow down. I try to go pretty fast until I feel that harder bottom. And then when I feel that little bit of harder bottom, I slow it down a little bit and let that, that bait do a lot of the action, that natural action that it is, you know, on that lighter hook, it just allows it to really do its thing. One thing that I've noticed with that Carolina rig, you obviously are banging around a lot of rocks. You got that, that weight clicking against the bead. There's a lot of that going on and, and it can almost call fish. I mean, think about a crawdad scurrying across some rocks. I mean, it makes a little bit of a sound. And I think there's something about that little clicking sometimes that really draws fish. And I don't know if it necessarily you know, it, I don't know if it's necessarily a, a bite in care. I think it just sort of, if you fish is over 30, 40 feet, they're really curious creatures. They want to know sort of what's going on as, as I have them coming to my trolling motor and the sound of the ping on my, on my, on my trolling motor sometimes and on the, on the transducer. Same, same thing with that weight hitting those rocks and clanking around. I think that sometimes they just go there and then all of a sudden they see, ooh, trench hog or whatever you're throwing and doop, that's when they bite it. So I think that's a really big key with a Carolina rig is the fact that you're, you're really disturbing the bottom, which really tends to draw fish in maybe a little bit better than most rigs. That's a good tuck. Golly, he bit that thing like, oh man. I was wondering why he, he was running from the school. Oh, Slim Jim. See, oh, Slim stole that away right there. There we go. Not the biggest one. I was wondering, I had a bite and he, just took, he grabbed it and literally ran the other way. He was running from his buddies. He knew he wasn't supposed to grab that trench hog. Oh, Big Mama was. One other thing I really like to throw this, this, this whole system is when I pull up on a spot, I graph over it and I see fish scattered out. It's a really good time to throw the Carolina rig because they're not grouped up in one place. They're not really active. They're not actively feeding on a big crankbait or a big spinnerbait or a big swimbait. You're really able to, to draw and catch a few fish that are not as active. And that's really what it comes down to. Sometimes when fit, they're not drawing current, those fish aren't really bunched up. They're not biting real well. It could be a great time to throw a Carolina rig. Even though it's, you know, you got a big heavy rod, you got heavy line, you know, it's, 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 it's really a finesse application with that 14 pound mono down there. It's floating around, it's real natural. It just seems to get bit a little bit better than other techniques.